Hello, I'm Christian from WatchGeico UK and today we're going to look at diagnosing watch problems. A customer has brought in a watch with this movement. This is an ETA 2892A2, probably the most common Swiss watch movement. This is used in Omega watches, IWCs, uh, sort of the mid-range market uh, up from 1200 pounds to 5000 pounds. Um, the customer complains that the movement, uh, the watch isn't keeping good time anymore and uh, that the movement is running erratically as well, sometimes it stops. So we have to find out what's wrong with it. Uh, a first look at the movement, uh, I look at the balance and I see that it doesn't swing as far as it should. So it probably has a low amplitude, amplitude meaning the angle that the balance uh, goes through. We have a machine to test this, it's called a time grapher, and I will quickly put the movement on the time grapher so we can see how it performs. We have our movement on the time grapher now, and it shows us a couple of things here. Firstly, as the customer complained, the watch isn't keeping good time, we concur here. Uh, this shows us that the movement is currently running at minus 52 seconds per day, so almost a minute slow. What we can also see here is that the amplitude is low, it's below 200 degrees, uh, so the balance doesn't swing as far as it should. This is the bead error, that's okay, nothing wrong with here, but also the this should be a nice straight line. When we're done with this movement, we'll put on the time graph again and you will see a lovely straight line here. So if something is wrong, we can, we can see that clearly on the time graph, and now we have to find out what the problem is. Let's have a quick look at the components of this movement. Um, there aren't that many parts here. We have the barrel here. This is where the main spring is and it provides the power to the movement. The barrel on the outside has teeth. These teeth engage with this pinion here. That is an intermediate wheel. Uh, usually this would be the center wheel, but as it's not in the center of the watch, it's called an intermediate wheel, that's fine by me. Uh, you could call it the second wheel, whatever you want to. Followed by the third wheel, and followed by the center seconds wheel or fourth wheel. Again, this depends how you want to call this. Uh, and the fourth wheel then drives the escape wheel here. So it's just a set of five wheels, and you can see the barrel, of course, turns so slowly that we can't even perceive that it is turning. That is true for that intermediate second wheel as well. The third wheel, we can actually make out that it is turning. The fourth wheel turns very, very distinctly, once a minute. And the escape wheel turns actually very quickly here. The escape wheel then will power the pallet, which goes back and forth, which makes the balance swing. That's it. It's a very simple mechanism, really. Uh, and we will now try and find out uh, why the movement isn't performing as it should. So I will take the gear train apart and we will have a look at the individual components and see if we can find out anything. Okay, let's start taking apart the movement. I'm going to start off with the balance. There's its screw. Now we can remove the balance wheel. Next component up is the pallet fork. We're going to let the power down for this. Yeah, I've already done that. So we can unscrew the pallet bridge. Take it screw off, take out the pallet bridge and take out the pallet fork. Now we can try and make the movement. I can. Now we can try to make the movement turn and it does start up a bit reluctantly. It doesn't turn as freely as I would like it to turn. So there is something wrong there. 
This is quite a nice construction here. We have a single cock that actually holds three wheels. It holds the third, fourth and escape wheel in place. So once that's removed, we can pretty much remove the gear train. So this is our fourth wheel, or also called central seconds wheel, escape wheel and the third wheel. Now we're going to inspect those a bit closer under the microscope. This here is our third wheel. And that is actually looking nice and clean. There are no problems with that whatsoever. Now we have a look at our escape wheel. Again, nice and clean, no visible problems with that. Now we're looking at the fourth wheel or central center second wheel and here we can see a problem. You can see between those teeth this dirt. Looks to me like skin flakes, so somebody touched this wheel with their finger and got some skin flakes on them. That is enough to make this movement not run properly. It's all it takes, but easy to diagnose. You can see it under the microscope. That's what the movement has been taken apart, and we put all the bits and bobs into this cleaning basket, which in turn goes into our grinder cleaning machine. And now it's just a matter of starting the machine and cleaning the parts. You can see this has four stages. First one is a nice ultrasonic tank where we do not only run the parts through cleaning fluid but also clean them uh, with ultrasonic waves. This will take a while uh, so we will let the machine do what it has to do and then we will put the movement back together. This is our wheel straight out of the cleaning machine and you can see it's as clean as a whistle now. No skin flakes, no dirt. Let's see how that performs. Okay, the gear train is back together and you can see I just have to barely touch the crown and it already starts moving. It's already oiled uh, and now we can put in the escapement, oil that properly and uh, then we can see what our movement is doing. This is a detail of the pallet fork under the microscope. You can see that little ruby at the top and it carries a tiny drop of oil that's uh, a special lubricant, uh, 9415. And we have also treated the escape wheel and the pallet fork with a special substance called Epilum. It prevents the oil from running off. So uh, this is one of the crucial parts of the oiling and we do all that under the microscope to make sure that we have exactly the right amount of lubricant at the right place. Uh, so you can see it's a very tiny drop of oil. We're going to distribute that over the escape wheel, apply that four or five times to, uh, to the teeth and then we have a perfectly oiled escapement. Here you can see the effect of the oiling. We have exactly the right amount of lubricant between that stone, that ruby, and the tip of the escape wheel. That is very nicely applied and the epilam prevents the lubricant from running off. I'm very happy with that. The proof, as always, is in the pudding. So we're back onto our time grapher. Let's see what the movement does. Plus two seconds a day, 290 degrees amplitude, zero milliseconds speed error. It doesn't get any better than that. The ETA 28982 is a super performer, very accurate movement and uh, rightly chosen for a lot of watches. Very reliable uh, and very accurate. And here we are. That was it. A couple of skin flakes on the fourth wheel. Problem solved. Thank you very much for your time watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And here's our movement running nicely as it should and it can go back into our customer watch. Thank you and goodbye.